Hi, I'm Bob Birch with the eExtension Network Literacy Community of Practice. And we're going to talk about what is a personal learning network. Most of us are used to a very hierarchical arrangement when we think about how we get our information, or at least how we have gotten our information in the past. And a lot of our information comes in a top-down flow. So whether that's a CEO or university president or a book publisher at the top of that hierarchical structure, we have a very passive relationship with information as we wait for it to flow down uh, through this hierarchy uh, before it eventually gets to us. Well, John Husband has come up with this term, wirearchy, to describe the framework uh, and the relationship that we have with information in the internet age. With information accessible to us, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week through online tools, we don't need to rely on the hierarchy anymore. So through being connected with people and resources, we can move from that hierarchy framework to a wirearchy framework and be much more active in our learning and professional development. So when we talk about a personal learning network or just a learning network, uh, there's a lot of definitions out there. The one that we like is a deliberately formed network of people and resources capable of guiding our independent learning goals and professional development needs. So your network's about people, but it's also about being connected to resources and sources of information and using the correct tools to filter that information. And it's also about you, not about your organization's goals for you, in learning or professional development about but it's about your goals your professional development needs and your active approach to finding the information that is going to help you meet those learning goals and those professional development needs so there are a lot of advantages to the power of a learning network, especially an online learning network. And one of those is exposure to incidental information. You don't know what you don't know. If you have a particular uh, need for a tool that will make you more efficient, or if there's a new way of doing something out there, if you're not aware of it, you can't just go and do a Google search for it. So being connected to your personal learning network exposes you to some of those new ideas, to some of those new tools, uh, to information that you wouldn't dis have discovered any other way except through the people in your learning network. Another advantage is the ability to ask questions. By asking questions through online tools, at you, it, your learning network gives you a, a pool of people not bound by geography, not uh, just inside of your organization, but anywhere in the world that can answer questions for you and give you help and feedback when you need it. And finally, connectedness. When you're connected to people in your learning network, you're not just directly connected, but you're indirectly connected to people. In this graphic, you see the people in orange there are the people that I have a strong direct connection to, but the people in gray around them are the people that those people are connected to. And because of those connections, I'm indirectly connected to those people too. I have access to them through the people that I'm directly connected to in my personal learning network. And so that sort of uh, expansiveness, that exponential potential of the learning network uh, comes to play, especially in an online learning network, because you're connected indirectly to so many more people than you're just directly connected to. So let's take a look at the framework of a personal learning network. So here you have the inputs, the, the places where you get information, content, commentary, research, experience, conversation. All of that is part of uh, the information and the learning that you get from your network. But the core of your personal learning network is the people experts, colleagues, friends, whoever you choose to connect with uh, in your personal learning network. And the reason that, that they're the core and the foundation is because they help you filter and find this information. The internet's overwhelming. There's so much information uh, for us to absorb. Our personal learning networks help us filter out the best, most effective information within our areas of interest. By connecting to those people, they share that with you and help you find uh, the information that's going to be uh, useful and of interest to you. 
There's another level of filtering available to you through online tools, news aggregators, feed readers, so that you can get information directly from sources as well and not just rely on the people in your network to share that with you, but to filter that using those online tools so that you really get effective information. You're not overwhelmed by the amount of information coming to you. So when you set up your network in this way, you end up with information flowing directly to you with uh, information that you can use, that you care about, and uh, that you can uh, put to use in your work and your personal learning. So the last part of this learning network is the feedback loop. Um, the way to get your information back into other people's learning networks by creating your own information, curating information, and sharing it back so other people can add you to their learning networks. And that just makes your personal learning network so much more uh, useful and effective. And so when I look at my personal learning network, I like to use Harold Jarkey's seek, sense, and share when I think about it. So the seek part is going out and finding that information. And I find some of that directly using some online tools, some news aggregators like Zite and Flipboard, feed readers like Feedly that allow me to subscribe to blogs and websites and get information fed to me without having to go out and visit those sites, and things like Google Alerts, which are saved searches that will alert you when something new comes into the, onto the internet that matches your search criteria uh, that you set up. When I talk about sense, that's making sense of this information. We've sought out all this information, now we need to make sense of it. And for me, a lot of that takes place in the social tools like Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, where I connect with the people in my personal learning network to help me make sense of that information and put it in some kind of context so that it can be applied to my work or my personal learning. And finally, share. And I share a lot through Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, through those social tools. But I also curate information on social bookmarking tools like Digo, uh, Pinterest, and the curation tool Scoopit, so that I'm completing that feedback loop and giving back to other people's personal learning networks and also helping myself make sense of information as I curate it, as I put it into context. I connect with that information so much more and think about how it can be applied to my work and to the work of others. So if you want to learn more about personal learning networks, check out the next video in this series, Starting Your Personal Learning Network. You can also check out our 60-minute recorded webinar, Creating Your Own Learning Network. The URL there is on the screen. Thanks.